Hi, I'm Darren P. Mack. And I'm Nikki, and this is Notification Squad on, on the Leaderboard. So in today's Unmuted discussion, we brought back Andy. Welcome back, Andy. Good to be back. And we're talking about AAA titles versus indie games. And are indie games killing AAA titles? Cliff Blazinski, a, a, or Cliffy B as he goes by on Twitter, a legendary game designer, said something really interesting. He said, Game development is hideously expensive and the games themselves aren't cheap. $60 is still a lot of money to ask people for and to ask them to make that bet multiple times per year. Gamers are picky. They're smart, he said. This is a nearly unsustainable model unless you're an Activision 2K or a Sony. He really goes on to talk about how AAA titles or AAA studios should really look at developing what he says double-A games. Like smaller games are more focused on gameplay because of the unsustainability of the market. Before we jump into kind of our AAA titles suffering because of indie games, really, what is an indie game? Like there's some debate, there's some discussion about what makes someone, a, what makes a studio an indie studio or what makes a studio a AAA studio? You guys have some thoughts? So it's funny because you said that around the internet it's mentioned that an indie game is if they both publish it and develop the game. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Uh, with that being said, I still think that there are a lot of other games that may not fit that description, but mm -hmm. are still considered indie. I think of games like even Minecraft that is huge now, yeah. or even PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, those are kind of technically Indie, but yet no, they're seeing. No, Minecraft isn't indie anymore. Is that indie? It's anymore? not anymore. Microsoft bought it for two point five billion dollars, so <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely not an indie game. But when it started, it was, and at the height of its popularity, still, it's very popular. It was considered an indie game. Yes. Yeah. But would you consider a team like Rockstar or Bethesda as indie game companies? I mean, they make and produce their own titles. But they're, they're not exactly. indie in the way I, I feel that indie games are supposed to be defined by, which is small teams, smaller budgets. Papa John's. Papa John's, yes. Well, <laughs> Andy, what, what for you defines an indie game, or uh, not an indie game, but an indie developer and a AAA developer? I mean, to me, it's a very, it's, it's a very gray area what mm -hmm. defines an indie game. I think it's understood that a smaller team, like a, two guys in the, in the basement, basically, making a title with no money whatsoever and funded by either a Kickstarter or a crowdsourcing sure. campaign, that to me is what an indie game developer should be defined by. The reality is, whenever a de one of the definitions that you can look at is when a developer and a, a developer is funding the development of the game, right? Mm -hmm. So like a publisher will commission a work and they'll pay for most of the development and pay for all the engineers and things of that nature and give some sort of creative direction. And then there's the people who actually develop it. And that can be a, a separate company, like think of like Square Enix for Sony or something like that. Yeah. But when you're looking at like these sort of, you're, what you're talking about, that mm -hmm. sort of indie sort of one, two, three person in a, in a room building a game over a series of years, like maybe like Supergiant, which is a team of maybe 10 to 15 people. It's not a large group of, um, of developers. There's a lot of opinions, there's a lot of perspective on it. Comment down below, let us know what you think an indie developer is or a AAA title developer is. Um, a lot of people look at the popularity of the games. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of change in your mind whether the game sort of, is there maybe a threshold, right? Like a popular game crosses this number of, of sales and therefore it's no longer an indie game, it's now a mainstream title. Well, we discussed The Witcher 3 the other day. We did talk about Witcher 3. How is that an indie company? Because they also develop and publish their own yeah. titles. I mean, CD technically, Project Red. they're an indie company. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you look at the labor, the U.S. government labor statistics, I told you about <laughs> yes, that. you did. A small company <laughs> is a company that has less than about 300, 350 people. Now, they have a team of 340, uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, it, I think it depends. So what I was going to say is that a lot of these numbers, for example, are like how many people are working on it, or yeah. if it is the same developer and publisher, those are things that are may not be uh, upfront that like a casual gamer might not necessarily consider. But like when it comes to indie games, it's for me, it's just like, oh, did you was it only downloadable? Was it available yeah. in store? Yeah. It's like those kind of factors uh, are are easier to kind of consider and make the, the opinion if it's an indie or, or a AAA title. You know, I always make the comparison to music, mm -hmm. you know, and I think about, you know, do-it-yourself garage band versus like a band that was produced through a record label. You know, and I think that when we talk about AAA titles, I think about, you know, games like Call of Duty and like Star Wars Battlefront that have, you know, that's available on multiple consoles that are available for uh, download as well, and then you think about games that are we, we would consider indie that we even covered on the channel, like uh, Friday Thirteenth game is mm -hmm. an indie game. Uh, yeah, it's, but very popular. Bendy and the Ink Machine. 
yeah. uh, Little Nightmares. Like, and those are games, even though they're popular, and kind of, same thing with the bands. Like, even though this band, you know, may have garnered like millions of fans, they're still an independent band. You know, same thing with the game. Even though they've garnered millions of players and has like been recognized as like a valuable and a fun game, it's still considered an indie game. Like, for example, Witcher Three. I still think it's independent. But when we go back to why we started this whole conversation, is indie games? Crushing triple A game. What was it? Well, like, the, I mean, the, but the, I mean, <laughs> we can talk about the definition of an indie game versus a triple A yeah. title all day. But the, the the heart of the question, and I think this is kind of where where, where things get interesting, mm -hmm. is are indie games changing or killing triple A titles? Like we're like you just mentioned, we're seeing these massive indie games that are highly successful, and you see the failure of triple A titles. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of triple A titles like Titanfall 2 for example yep. came out and it drew, failed completely. Good no game. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky failed completely. So you've got these these uh, bro, um, not Breath of the Wild, uh Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> the Horizon Zero Dawn was a success. What? It was an amazing <laughs> game. It was very successful, sold over a million copies when it first came out. But Andy, you you had some interesting thoughts on this. Well, let's say look at Mass Effect Andromeda, which their uh, oh, Mass their Effect company Andromeda was, was recently absorbed into a division of, of EA, and now it's that's it for Mass Effect for a little bit of time. I feel because you have a, a series that you expect a level of quality from, mm -hmm. and then when it doesn't deliver, it just it just poof vanishes completely. So I think. Indie games are bringing a level of creativity that triple games can't bring anymore to the to the field. So wait, you're saying that indie games are bringing innovation, and creativity because they have that, to. That triple A titles yeah. are struggling to match. Yeah. That they, are they not innovating at all? Or well, the thing is, like for triple A games, like we have Call of Duty and Star Wars, for example, they can afford not to take risks creatively, yeah. because they'll get the sales guaranteed. But an indie game has to make their mark somehow. Like, why is this game going to be fun to play? What's the catch? Yeah, and that's why they have to be creative. And half the time, like you know, it's not necessarily a polished-looking game. Like you know, a lot of these indie games will take like a creative, you know, look to their games. Like maybe it's like Polygon or like Cell Shaded, mm -hmm. where you know they don't have the money to pump into making something like, oh my god, look how realistic this is. Talking more about the the indie games versus this, uh, I always think about, you know, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds because yeah. you know, even what do mods? you know, lie in this whole thing, you know, because you have games like H1Z1, right? And it gained so much popularity and his mods that he was able to make this new game that is actually coming to console. And when we talk to our first question, it's like, it, are any games killing AAA? I don't think necessarily, I want to say they're killing them, but just like YouTube, TV and movies have to adapt yeah. to what's going on. You know, they can't just ignore any titles. They have to, you know, what you were saying, that indie games are doing this huge focus on gameplay because they have to sell the game somehow. So AAA games may have the capital, but at the end of the day, if they don't sell, you know, in the case of Mass Effect, then like there's gonna be a problem. So they have to pivot, reposition themselves, and not necessarily is indie games killing AAA titles, but it is definitely making noise where they actually have to acknowledge it and consider doing something different. Do you think that the, the industry is adapting fast enough? Based on what, I mean, we're seeing GameStop close. We're seeing all of these different changes, like brick and mortar shops are no longer the, 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 the destinations they used to be. Video stores are closing because everything's online. You have DLC, you are, AAA titles are trying to treat games as services versus just being a game, but are they transitioning fast enough to deal with the economics of what indie games are doing, right? You have a small production team. You don't need to sell as many games to make your money back versus like an EA of the world which has public shareholders and they're looking for a return on investment. But when you think of like a game like Grand Theft Auto, one of the most expensive games ever made at almost $300 million when you look at development and marketing for that game, it can't afford to, just, it has to make at least $300 million or more to be successful. Like, like Cliff was saying, completely unsustainable. Are we seeing that change happen fast enough? I think with regards to budgets for AAA games, marketing is a huge and it has to just go away completely, I feel. Wow. In the long term. Because I think nowadays... Uh, well, half the, the budgets the, are marketing. Yeah, developers should look games. at a game and say, does this stream well on YouTube or Twitch? Because that's going to really sell a game in today's world, I feel. Yeah. Because if it doesn't, then no one's going to want to buy it. Like, you can market to hell, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, if it's not... Doesn't translate well in that in that online space where fans can connect to it and and see it. Like, 
it's it's not going to go well. And that's kind of <laughs> like playing off of what I was saying, like you know, adapting, yeah. right? And online streaming is a big part of gaming, like whether you like to admit it or not. But mm -hmm. a lot of these indie developers, when they make a game, I feel like they're going to consider that first before you know a AAA um, game developer will. They're too safe. They're playing it safe. I mean, when you look at the the major games that are continuously being made, are sequels are being are rehashed of some other or offshoots of some other popular title. I mean, if not now, maybe they're considering more factors, but definitely they're playing safe. Like, you know, in the past 10 years, how many of the same rehash shooters have we seen? That's playing it safe. You know, it's safe to make another Madden or another FIFA. Mm -hmm. That's playing it safe and making sequel after sequel. But I actually, it's almost refreshing, you know, especially with E3. You can actually argue that there was a lot of the same games, like, you know, we see a lot more sequels, but yeah. it was actually refreshing to see a lot of newer games come out. One of the things where, uh, and uh, one of the questions about, like, the, the idea of accessibility, right? Like, AAA titles traditionally spend a lot of money on marketing, they spend a lot of money on making the graphics beautiful, right? Like, that's where a lot of the cost goes, is into making ma things like Mass Effect you know, minus some of the <laughs> some of the facial issues that they have, facial animatics, but like games like Horizon Zero Dawn or Zelda, they spend a lot of <laughs> money on their graphics. They spend a lot of money on their their um, just making sure that the game is accessible. Do you think that we're at a point in gaming where graphics just don't matter? Where they should really go back and focus on gameplay exclusively? I don't think it's mattered for a long time. I mean, I was sitting mm. in Microsoft's conference at E3 this year to talk yeah. about their Xbox One X, which is a horrible name, by the way, for a console. <laughs> and it was 4K this and 60 FPS. Yeah. And I'm like, do gamers really care about 4K graphics this much? Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, I, I'm, I'm playing Hyper Light Drifter until 4 a.m. I'm having a great time but with, with pixel graphics. But Forza 7 or... has, you know, with the 4K, the super special yeah. graphics. Whatever the hell that, that thing is called for, for Minecraft. There's a, I mean, these. Free, I'm like, that looks great, it. but it's not what I, what my primary focus is on what, what a game should be, which is fun first and foremost. I would like to just mention uh, Nintendo does a really good job. Like, even though Breath of the Wild was, you know, this huge world that they built out and they, you know, give you just like really immersive experience, yeah. but you have games like Splatoon that isn't lifelike, you know, and its core focus is the gameplay, making sure that. You know, when you're playing that game online and also uh, offline, you know, you're having a good time. You know, and that's one of those things where, you know, Nintendo isn't necessarily an indie developer, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> but their focus is, you know, gameplay first. But here's the other thing. Okay, you have a AAA title. I mean, AAA developers. There are things that AAA developers can still do that I don't think indie studios do well. So, I mean, my question to you would be, what, is there still a place for AAA titles? And of course there is. It always will be. I mean, we, yeah. we, we still like huge production value and these engrossing stories and experiences. But I just feel like in in this day and age, I mean, graphics aren't it anymore. Like we're past the days of of, of bits and how sure. many you know and all these things. It's it's not about that. Anymore. But immersion is. It is. Yes. Immersion yeah. is a very important yeah. part of it. Like yeah. when you look at Final Fantasy 15 or some of these really longer games, like. Uh, even Zelda, like you were just talking about. I mean, you're looking at hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay because the world is so expansive and complex. An indie, a, a indie studio can't keep up with that sort of world building aspects. Well, it, it, it can, in, in a sense. Like, look like at Kentucky Route Zero. Okay. And that kind of game, it's, like, it's simple, but it's, there's complexity there. there there's, there's passion there. There's, 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 there's more to it than what it looks like on the surface. Or, for example, let's say Minecraft, right? Before it was, you know, the AAA title, <laughs> they, the pixels weren't necessarily, that was their hook almost, you know, yeah. their graphics. And it, it has led to a resurgence of, of retro gaming, yeah. so and, absolutely. And every single person who played it, and each time they played it, it was a different experience. So that game, you know, you can easily log hundreds of hours. Focusing on gameplay, I think, is probably the most important thing. I mean, I, I still think AAA titles have a, a strong place in the ecosystem. I think we were talking about before how both really can exist well. Yeah. I think indie, ti indie games have emerged as a very powerful force in the gaming, in gaming development, and they will continue to be a, a space for innovation and creativity. And I think that's okay. Kind of like, you know, Google and Apple, they still have a place in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. they're powering yeah. all the services that we use on our phones and things of that nature. Who We don't want to live in a world without them, but we still, I do like how there's still innovation happening within mobile and telecommunication spaces. And I think it'll be the same for gaming. You know, I made an example comparing gaming to music. The last comparison I'm gonna make is actually movie making, right? Sure. Like, doesn't matter like what kind of superhero movie comes out, but if Marvel made it, 
I'm gonna watch it. You know what I mean? Versus like, say an indie, you know, did this awesome killer story, brand new story, and it was amazing. Like Chronicle. You know, or something like, yeah, like Chronicle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have something like Infinity War getting us all hyped up, and maybe it's just because of the graphics, you know, because it looks so <laughs> awesome. We finally <laughs> we get to see Thanos on screen versus like some do-it-yourself, like, right. not that well choreographed, you know, indie film, you know, versus Disney's budget. There's a place for both, obviously, but I feel Triple has a, has a lot to learn from the indie game scene. Because I think yeah. back in the That's day, right. Games weren't afraid to experiment about what they put out there. We had games like Prappa the Rappa and Vib Ribbon yeah, and oh, Rez oh, and Choo Choo yeah. Rocket. Rez. They weren't afraid to like do different things. Now it's like this industry where it's all about having the biggest budgets and bloated, you know, graphics, and it's it's you're losing the, the heart and soul of what a game should be. We live in a world full of noise. Right, like I think when you look at advertising, just generally and as an industry, people are just spending more money because it's so hard to get a message through. And when you invest, you know, $65 million into a game, can you really just leave it up to, let's hope people discover it? Mm -hmm. Or do you put another 60 million on top of that to ensure it gets in front of your audience that you're trying to trying yeah. to talk to? Because you've got YouTube, you've got, you still have traditional media, you've got radio, television, and things like that. Billboards. Andrew. You've got billboards, you've got all of these different, I mean, a, a average person sees be anywhere between 10 to 50,000 impressions an hour. So you, how do you break through that? You make a good game. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right. I mean, that, yeah. You make a good Word game. Word of mouth is, I think, arguably the strongest yeah. thing. Word of mouth is the strongest. Yeah. I, I will agree. Word Bottom line, it's, it's, if the game is good, it will sell on its own merits. Fair. It, it'll I don't disagree it, with it, what you're it, saying. It'll find a breakthrough. It will break through. It always does. I don't know if it always does. Name me one game that you think deserved more credit than it was due. Titanfall 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Titanfall 2. Like that, that, but that's a perfect example, right? Uh -huh. Like you've got Blizzard that's open, uh, uh, Overwatch. watching Overwatch. You had Call of Duty, <laughs> Infinite Warfare, that came out right in between that was Titanfall 2. A great game, so but it was good. devoured by, by the competition. And it's not a, I, I think, so when you're looking at an example like that, sometimes you do need an extra push. Like if Titanfall 2 had the same marketing dollars as Blizzard put behind Overwatch, then that game may have done better. Do you yeah. think if it wasn't there on Xbox One exclusively, the first, the first installment would have been a different story for part two? I think so. Oh. Yeah, maybe a little bit, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right? I th I think. Well, th that's a different conversation. It is, but that's a different no. conversation. Uh, but uh, my point is that sometimes good games do they they get lo overlooked. But there's so many of them. There's so many games. <laughs> And that's why we leave it to you guys in the <laughs> comments. Please let us know what you think about AAA titles versus indie games. Is there a place for both? Is indie game titles ruining the AAA market or can they coexist? As you can see, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to AAA titles versus indie games. And if you want to continue the conversation, make sure you find us on Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for joining us, Andy. If people want to follow you, your Twitter is uh, Pantsguy. It's at Pantsguy, yes. Yeah, and you also host a podcast? I yeah, do, it's actually a yes. podcast. I host a podcast. That earlier. I Tell just recorded my 10th episode. It's called Nintendo Dual Screens Podcast, hosted by Proven Gamer, in the link in this general region. In this, I guess. No, so, it'll actually be in the description. Oh, which is below though. It's still down. It's still down. Yeah, it's still yeah. down. I the mean, place fine. where it would be. Yes. Right. Perfect. Yes. Next up, in game chat. So in game chat, we look at comments on the videos from this week, and we pick a comment of the week from our last notification squad episode. We were talking about what our favorite childhood games were. Mm -hmm. Pathetic Virgin sixty nine said Doom, and I responded, I didn't even think about computer games. Yes, Doom was groundbreaking for me. Uh, we also had Subject Ultima say Kingdom Hearts. Gotta give it to Kingdom Hearts. Yep. And Garrett Vaughn says, I don't know, because I'm still in my childhood. <laughs> that was funny. I mean, there were so many games I forgot to mention in that in that last one, but it was hard. I mean, it's like, like when you play hundreds of games as a child, it's hard to choose a couple that you're a favorite. I just thought of one now, and I didn't think of it last week. Oh, what I, is that? Tony Hawk 2. I forgot Soul Calibur. Okay. Yeah. So on our GTA video, we had a comment from Tadrid Ahumed. What about the eight-year-old who camps outside of your garage and blows you up all the time? So yeah. it's funny because we were talking about uh, the types of players you meet in Grand Theft Auto, and that eight-year-old would be me. And comment of the week comes from Speedy Scout, who said the truth behind the leaderboard, the dark clip bait you should know. And I really kind of like this title. Maybe we should make it a video? I don't know. 
I don't think our titles are clickbaity. We try to make sure that whenever we put out a title that it actually matches some of the content that's in the video. I don't know, Nikki. Um, would you consider emojis clickbait? <laughs> I have not put emojis in the titles in a while, guys. There was a lot of outrage at the emojis in the title. But let us know in the comments if you like the emojis and I'll put them back. But no, they're not clickbaity. Our next segment is Fan Roundup, where we like to shout out the squad and give out prizes. So you can see on the screen some of the people who have joined or mentioned Notification Squad. We've got Robin Alderwood who said Note Squad, which I liked. I thought that was kind of funny. Triple Z, can I get a like for no reason? And then someone named I Love You said Notification Squad, where you at? I said, where you at? We're here. We're here in New York. Emily C, who was early on the video, and of course our good friend Ryan Koshal, Good Morning Notification Squad, he got first again. Always first. We like to end Fan Roundup with How Well Do You Know That Game, a chance for where you can win prizes. Last week we showed you this image, and a lot of people got it right. You can see. Yeah, yeah, a lot of this. We, we chose an easier one, because last week no one got it. Yep. So we chose a different image this time. Except but, yeah. for Ryan Koshal, he, he said Spyro, but Ryan, all these uh, other people, was, they said, Ryan, Ryan. Sorry, they guessed buddy. correctly, it was Jack and Daxter, but there can only be one winner. Only one. And that winner is. And the winner is Frederick McKenzie. He said Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy for PlayStation 2. It was technically PlayStation 3, but PlayStation 2 was close enough. Congratulations, DM us your info on Twitter at the leaderboard net, and you won a Best Buy gift card. But there's still a chance for you to win. All you gotta do is identify this image, and if you know what this is, what game it's from, be the first one to comment, and you too can win a Best Buy gift card. And make sure you check the link in the description for How Well Do You Know a Game, because there are some terms and conditions that do apply. So that's pretty much the show. Please give us a call at 347-948-6271 and let us know what we should talk about next. And if you want to join the notification squad, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you'll be notified whenever we upload. And Nikki, when do we upload? We upload five times a week. And that's Wednesday through Sunday. And if you want to get more out of your games, make sure you subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for, for video, video game, game facts. <laughs> <laughs> All of our cards are blank. We, we just have them here just because, you know, that looks You great. have notes, though. <laughs> you don't want to say that. Put me on blast. I do have a couple of notes. We upload five times a week. And that's Monday. No. <laughs> it's Wednesday through Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>